Hi, if you're new to this channel, my name is Jared Gross and I've been traveling the world to every 3D printed house I can find. But something we haven't touched on much is 3D printed bridges. You may be wondering, why would you want to 3D print a bridge? In this video, we're going to get into some of the details of the advantages of 3D printed bridges and check out eight examples from around the world that all implement 3D printed construction technology in unique ways, realizing different benefits for each project. The rendering you see now is a bridge built in Spain by Asionia with a D-shape concrete printer. The model was optimized to reduce the amount of material used. That's why you see gaps in the concrete on the sides of the wall. This bridge is 12 meters long and 1.75 meters wide. It was printed off-site and then installed on location. It's just a walking bridge, so the weight requirements aren't as much as you would need to drive a car over it, but it crosses over a small stream, so I'm sure they did enough engineering calculations to make sure it wouldn't break and nobody would fall in. Asionia mentions that it's micro-reinforced concrete, which implies that this structure doesn't use other types of traditional reinforcement like rebar. Another project featured later in this video will show you how companies are 3D printing metal wire reinforcement directly into their projects. This bridge here is called Striatus, and it was designed by prestigious architecture firm Zaha Hadid. It's a compression-only structure, which means that it has no metal reinforcement and requires no strength and tension. It was printed off-site in many pieces and then brought on location and assembled. Again, since it's a compression-only structure, it doesn't require any joinery on the blocks. To print this bridge, they used a 3D printed ink developed by Holsim that's a 2K material. This means that it is a two-component mixture with an accelerant added at the nozzle. The benefits of a 2K material are more unique shapes and contours than you could achieve with a regular concrete because this material hardens much faster than it would otherwise. Technically, a material like this and most materials used in 3D printed construction would be referred to as a mortar rather than a concrete because they only use small aggregates. Zaha Hadid designed this bridge with the intention of reducing, reusing, and recycling. Reducing in the design of the bridge to optimize for minimum material usage. Reusing by having elements of the bridge that can be disassembled and then used for other purposes later on, and then recycling because every component of this bridge can be recycled to build something new in the future. Assembly still requires a decent amount of human labor. This is in some ways a good thing because it eases the concerns people have of automation taking away jobs. It doesn't take away the jobs, it just changes them. The height of this bridge is 3.5 meters with a 216 square meter surface area. It spans 15 meters and weighs 24 and a half tons. It's an excellent demonstration of how compression only structures can be developed in a way that can be efficient and also beautiful for the local environment. In such a public space, hopefully it will inspire many more people to start contributing to this growing industry of construction automation and 3D printing mortars and concrete. Next, let's take a look at a bridge developed by a company I have featured multiple times, Vertigo. This is a topology optimized bridge, which means that they optimized for strength while reducing the amount of material used. You can do this with 3D printed concrete in ways that can't be achieved with formwork because formwork doesn't allow you to easily form gaps in the middle of the structure. These gaps reduce the amount of material you use, reduce the weight of the structure, and make the whole process more environmentally efficient. When this project was developed, Vertigo was printing in sand or gravel so that they could achieve overhangs and unique shapes 
that wouldn't have worked with the material that they were using. But since then, when I visited them in the Netherlands, they shared with me that now they're using an accelerant so that they no longer need to use the gravel and sand method. I'm sure the Vertigo CEO Volker is very happy he doesn't have to deal with all that sand and gravel anymore. If you want to learn more about Vertigo, you can listen to my multiple podcast episodes that I did with their CEO. He was actually my first guest ever and was featured again on my podcast in episode 19 from his facility in Eindhoven. This video is actually kind of old and dated. They've since moved to a new facility, gotten a new printer, and developed many new designs and models. As you can see, it was built in many different pieces and is held together via tension cables. The tension cables squeeze the concrete blocks together and allow it to maximize the concrete's compressive strength performance. This next bridge is located in Tianjin, China, and at 28 meters long, it's the longest 3D printed bridge in the world. China, for a long time, has been experimenting with 3D printed construction technologies. Both Winsun and Washeng Tengda have been 3D printing in China for a long time. This bridge was printed by Hebei University and is made to resemble the Zhaozu Bridge built by the Su Dynasty 1400 years ago. It was printed in segments and assembled on site like many of the other bridges that we've seen. China is well renowned for their construction capabilities, especially their speed, so for them to be experimenting with this technology is quite promising. Now for the project you've been waiting for. This bridge by BAM has metal wire inserted during the print process to give the concrete strength in tension. It's one of the few iterations of this technology implementing the wire that I've seen. Although I think it's a really good idea because generally concrete only has compressive strength. So by including this wire, you really increase the versatility of the material. In addition, the wire should really assist with the longevity. A lot of what's needed to bring this technology to a larger scale is experimentation. So by testing what can be achieved with different print methods like wiring or various materials, they can find the most effective solutions. Maybe by printing a wire inside, they can use a cheaper material, therefore reducing the construction cost. These kind of benefits require time and engineering to work out because anything that has to do with construction is a big safety concern and safety of the people is the highest priority. Now finally we have the last 3D printed bridge on the list and this one is made entirely of metal. MX3D is a metal 3D printing company that uses ABB robots like you see here to weld metal in thin air in any form you want. Printing with metal yields many benefits that concrete and mortars fail to provide. Most notably strength and tension and freeform printing. With metal, you can print in basically thin air because it's so strong and hardens so quickly. You can even print completely upside down if you so desire. These renderings and models show that MX3D may try to print on site in the future, but currently they do their printing off site in a warehouse and then bring their projects to their final locations. Like many of the other projects on this list, this bridge was topology optimized to reduce the amount of material required and allow it to have sufficient strength for people to walk over it without concerns of a break. This optimization is something that computer softwares excel at because they can do many iterations of a design and test thousands of models in the time that it would take a person to simply design one. When you have thousands of computer generated models, it's easy to select for whatever things you want to maximize or minimize because you have so many options to compare it to. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, another great way to support my channel is by signing up for the virtual village of 3D printed houses. 
This is a collection of virtual 360 tours I've taken of the 3D printed houses and 3D printing facilities that I visited. In this virtual village, you're able to digitally walk around each space that I've added. Currently, there are 15 tours totaling over 20,000 square feet of tourable space. You can really see some of the details like the outlet placements, some of the HVAC systems. Most of the projects are still under construction and so you're able to see things that are going to be hidden when they're complete. Sign up at the link in the description below or automate dot construction slash sign up. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll catch you next time.